So this has to be the rarest Christian Dior fragrance ever manufactured. It's a fragrance called Saint Jean de Bray. And it was, I think they made like 20 bottles of it or something like that. And it was in collaboration with something. I, I, I don't even know all of the details surrounding the manufacturing and the release of this fragrance. It's part of the Maison Dior lineup and only very, very few people in the world, like there was such a limited quantity, ever manufactured. They were never on sale. They were given gratis to people who worked for a particular company or something like that. Well, the folks over at the Dua brand got their hands on a few milliliters of it. They reverse engineered it. And here you have their inspiration of the rarest Christian Dior fragrance ever, Saint Jean de Bray. This one is called A Place in France. I'm really excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new release from the brand, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on A Place in France, which is the newest inspired expression by the Dua brand, it's their interpretation of Saint Jean de Bray by Maison Dior, a Christian Dior fragrance that was produced in very, very, very limited quantities, never sold, only given as gratis bottles to people who worked for a particular company or something like that. I wanna start the video off first by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, reviews, top tens, giveaways, unboxings and more please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it hit the bell icon and give this video a thumbs up it would really really mean a lot to me so i was looking on the website and i actually got in touch with the owner of the dua brand and i inquired a little bit because i couldn't find any information online what are the notes what does it smell like how did this come to be I still can't find much information about it, but I was provided with a note breakdown that I guess the chemists put together after reverse engineering this one. And it has cinnamon, jasmine, magnolia, pink pepper, lemon, amber, musk. If I'm remembering correctly, maybe even a touch of vanilla in the dry down. This stuff is gorgeous. If Christian Dior actually manufactured this and sold it, I am already going to speculate that it would fly off the shelves. Immediately, this reminded me of a very, 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 very expensive Creed fragrance. And I'm just really happy to have this because I'm gonna wear this in place of the Creed fragrance that I'm gonna mention a little bit later on in the review. But in any case, I am so excited to talk to you about this really, really special, really rare fragrance. Let's take a quick look at the presentation first. So as soon as this fragrance opens up, you have this really juicy, almost fruity floral type of an introduction. The jasmine and magnolia are so clean and waxy and just really luscious in the heart of this fragrance. But in the opening, you do get the lemon. You have a little bit of citrus happening in here, maybe a little bit of mandarin orange as well. It just opens up so fresh, so delightful with that bouquet of citrus. And the citrus combines with those floral ingredients in the heart to create this really warm, clean, really special fragrance. Look, I'm just going to go out and mention it. The fragrance that this reminds me of, it's a Creed fragrance and it's called Jardin de Malfi. If you've ever tried that fragrance before, it is one of the best. And there's also a Montal fragrance that smells like it. It's called Soleil de Capri. I love that fragrance. So I never purchased it. I never purchased <laughs> Jardin de Malfi either. I was always intimidated by the price tag, although I did purchase Spice and Wood. So in any case, here is a fragrance that really reminds me of Jardin de Malfi. Jardin de Malfi, I think, could have a little more rose and, you know, it's a little bit more, I guess, gender bender, I suppose. This one just smells so fresh, so clean, so zesty. The jasmine, the vanilla is sensual. The musk is very billowy, also adds like this clean, conclusion to the fragrance and the more i smell it the more i'm addicted to it you know it's really funny because maison dior which is formerly known as the la collection privé line they have so many beautiful fragrances au noir i own a bottle of bois d'argent i own a bottle of there are so many that i purchased throughout the years and i have a pretty solid collection of dior privés i would say but here is one that 
if they were to ever manufacture it and sell it to the general public, people would fall in love with this one. It would be spoken about in the same breath as many popular Creed fragrances, many popular Parfum de Marly fragrances. I really think that the quality for this one is really, really, really high up there. So here's the thing. Jardin de Malfi does also kind of get compared sometimes to another Creed fragrance called Aqua Fiorentina, and that gets compared to Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue for her, poor femme. So I think in that breath, I think there might be some people out there that might argue this leans a little bit feminine. In my opinion, it really doesn't. I've worn Jardin de Malfi and many inspirations of it throughout the years, and I just think it smells very unisex, right? So it doesn't smell masculine nor feminine. I just think it smells perfectly unisex. And this one just smells so smooth, so sultry, so delectable. This stuff is amazing. Saint Jean de Bray. I would really like to know how that fragrance would do if it ever hit the market. And you know, Dior does these things from time to time. They might decide a year or two from now that, you know what? We'll spin this really interesting narrative and we'll say it was a limited edition and this and that. And you know, hopefully they do release it because I think it's, it's amazing. A place in France, the Dior brand has recreated it. I hope you love it. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I did compare it to Jardin de Malfi. Of course, this one is rich in its own way. It's not a carbon copy. It's not exactly the same, but it does have some similarities. So when you smell this, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I think I've smelled a play off of this DNA before. Longevity on this one is about nine hours. It is on the fresher, more floral, citrusy side of things. So it's not one of the heaviest fragrances that Dua has ever manufactured. But 33% concentration, this stuff lasts a very long time. I'm gonna say about nine hours on my skin is what I got. In terms of the projection, very well for the first hour and a half of application, it did radiate beyond an arm's length. It became a elbows length scent right around hour six and a half or seven, a skin scent right around hour nine. In terms of the versatility, incredibly versatile, unisex, I'd probably wear this one in the hotter weather. I think this one can be worn casually or formally, and I think anybody of any age can really enjoy this one. It does have a youthful appeal, but then there's this sophisticated quality about it that I really enjoy too. The presentation is really nice. I, nice. I do enjoy the graphic on this one with that sort of picturesque landscape of France on it. I think it's quite beautiful. My final verdict on this fragrance is this is a recreation of one of the rarest fragrances ever manufactured. And to know that it came from the brand Christian Dior, I think just makes it a lot more meaningful. And this is the only way anybody will even come close to sampling that fragrance. Because from what I've been told from Intel that I've gathered, a lot of the people that that fragrance had been gifted to didn't even open their bottle. They, want, they understood the rarity of it. They wanted to keep it sort of like in the plastic wrap or the cellophane or whatever it came in, I don't know, but they didn't open it. And uh, even the person that gave away 10 milliliters to the owner of the brand, I think he or she might have been reluctant. It's just speculation, but I know if I were in possession of something really, really rare, I probably wouldn't give it up. In any case, guys, Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. That was my review of A Place in France by the Dua brand. If you own or have tried anything from this brand, I would love to get your feedback. Drop your comments down below. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, hit the bell, give it a thumbs up. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.